Um, uh, my story is about a repressed Japanese Buddhist priest who, uh, when he reaches middle age uh, or is approaching 40, um, is sent by his superior to Brooklyn to open up their uh, first temple in America. Uh, he is, uh, as I said, repressed. And I am going to read a scene. He's just arrived uh, in Brooklyn, and he was hoping to meet all the believers, local believers, in a religious ceremony. But the New Yorkers, being New Yorkers, they thought it more appropriate to have a Buddhist cocktail party instead. So I'm just going to read a very brief scene of um, uh, him, uh, this Japanese Buddhist priest who's been living in the mountains in a monastery, suddenly being thrust into a uh, Buddhist cocktail party in Brooklyn. Mrs. Graham's husband, our host, did not practice, and I had the impression he was hiding upstairs. But their teenage daughter was a Buddhist and stood by the long table of food under the crystal chandelier, helping caterers pass around silver trays of finger food. An alarming description until it was explained I should eat the food on a napkin with my fingers. A glass of white wine was pressed into my hand. In Japan, I would, of course, never publicly drink in front of believers I had never met. But, because, uh, but perhaps because I was in a foreign land and rather nervous, I gratefully accepted the drink. I'm not sure who I met that evening. It remains a blur, but I remember there was an African-American public school teacher from the Bronx, an accountant, and someone who sold wall-to-wall -wall carpets in Bayonne, New Jersey. I bowed and smiled and greeted the American Buddhists and made small talk. I was quickly drained of my reserves and still had not crossed even the first room. So I grabbed a second glass of wine if I had to hear one more time from the Americans that Buddhism is not really a religion, but a philosophy, I believe my samurai ancestors would have risen up from the dead and run them through with the point of a katana sword. The Americans seemed to believe, as I had experienced with Mr. Symes, that praying for material benefits and receiving them somehow proved that our religion worked. Some did not address me respectfully as Reverend Oda, but slapped me on the back and called me Sado or Rev or Reverend O. And I had no idea how I should respond to this inappropriate informality, for I had never experienced anything quite like that before. You'll find I prepared the community well for your arrival, said Mr. Dolan, the Staten Island insurance agent who introduced himself as the head study honcho. He had auburn hair and very white skin with cancerous looking bumps and such a round hard stomach I had the impression he was hiding a medicine ball under his shirt. You'll be very impressed, he said. We meet every week in a believer's apartment in Manhattan. I have, I've been giving a, a series of lectures on the proper Buddhist practice based on my extensive study. It's very rigorous intellectually. This is commendable. And the lectures are based on what study material? Tons of books, the Reader's Digest Encyclopedia of Religion, Tales of Siddhartha, Buddhism for Dummies, the list goes on and on. Buddhism for Dummies, I, I, I'm not quite aware. Don't let the title deceive you. Heavier than it sounds, excellent text. <laughs> Mr. Dolan had backed me into a corner behind a potted shrub of some sort, and his face was so close of mine, as we talked, I felt bits of recently chewed finger food fly through the air and land on my brow and chin. I see, I managed to say with a stiff inspection, expression. It is more traditional to base lectures on the Lotus Sutra and the four sacred texts, such as the eternal teachings, but very interesting choice of doctrinal material. The believers here know all about karma, all about it. I spent the three sessions explaining the concept. This is very efficient. In Japan, we believe it takes a lifetime to understand karma at deep level. <laughs> yeah, well, things go a lot quicker here in America. <laughs> I dabbed my forehead with a napkin and excused myself, just as Mr. Dolan was explaining. It's like that great line from Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Peace of mind isn't at all superficial. I see, yes. So uh, after uh, he gets introduced into Brooklyn, um, as you can see, he's surrounded by very eccentric characters.